weather. We had the sunshine. I'll tell you this morning, it was just the way we set up on the floor this morning, just as pretty as could be. God is so good. We had to look very far around to see how good God had been for everyone else. I know we all have a lot of needs, a lot of problems. Let's start out with a word from this morning. Father in heaven, I thank you again for this praise of our heads before you. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for each and every one of us. Lord, I can go on and on to thank you for the workers that we have here, for what they've done. You don't have to look far to see all the work that's been done around here and everybody that's chipped in and done their job. Just want to thank them. Lord, I ask you to be at the service, be with each song, each testimony. And Lord, bring the message only you may bring. Father, if there's any here that don't know you as your personal Savior, or Lord, there's any here who just has a need, and they want to talk to you, that they bring it to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And before we get going on our song, is there any birthdays this last week or today? Any birthdays? Is there anyone got a birthday?
1995, Tell Me the Story of Jesus.
If you're going to build this morning, you better build on the solid foundation. As we go to prayer this morning, is there any request you'd like to be done? Yeah, just uh, thank you, everybody. First, for the prayers of my mother. Um, you know, and if you would keep saying prayer for her, she's struggling right now. And hopefully she can get through it with the grace of God. Thank you so much. Uh, first, for our son who's going through the surgery this week and they're pretty sure they got a we'll just pray for her she's going to find out this week if she has to have um, chemotherapy or um, radiation so her name is Patty um, please pray for my friend Let's all stand for prayer. Brother Dave, I'm asking you to pray. Lord God, we're so privileged to be able to come before you, Lord, and bring these things that are on our hearts. Lord, so many things have been mentioned, and so many other things were, were represented by the little hand of, of, of the silent prayer. Lord, we pray for these family situations that have been mentioned, Lord, especially for those that are in need of salvation. Also, Lord, for those that are in need of a physical touch from you, a, a healing, either directly from you, Lord, or, or through the medical professionals you bless us with, and we thank you, Lord, for both. Lord, we, we have learned of some prayer, uh, some praise requests, or some praise reports, I should say, Lord, we're so thankful for these, the, the new babies, uh, the, the, uh, the things that are going on in our lives. Lord, thank you for being, for being such a loving God that it rejoices when we rejoice. Lord, we've heard of some of the lost loved ones. And we ask, Lord, that this time you'd be especially close to them. 
Lord, we know of others that weren't mentioned this morning. Lord, each, each law club one represents a, a, a family that, that really could use some, some uh, comfort, some, some love. Oftentimes, Lord, it's through one of us. We ask, Lord, you help motivate us, help us to recognize those situations where, where we can represent you as your hand. Lord, we pray for the church this morning, Lord. We thank you for the, for the ministry of the church, and we, and we pray, Lord, that as we, as we learn your word this morning, learn, learn what, you, uh, what you share with us, Lord, what you place on pastors' hearts, that, that Lord, we would be, uh, that we grow through it, Lord, and we'd be more prepared to, to uh, minister in your name. Lord, for each prayer request of this nation, and Lord, especially now I'm thinking about the, the hands that were lifted, Lord, between us and you. But we, but we know, Lord, that you have a concern for each of these requests that's even greater, though it seems hard, but, it, but, but Lord, your love is even stronger, and your power is so much mightier than anything we can do, and that's why we lift these requests up to you, Lord, place them at your feet. Turn them over to you, and we, we trust in God that loves us. In these things we pray in Christ's name.
more sickness burn. No more pain. No more suffering over there. I can't wait for that day, church. I can't wait for that day that there isn't no more suffering, there isn't no more pain. Go down to Mom's house and I'll offer me crying because she went out to be with the Lord. Today, church, I tell you what, what a day that is going to be. And by Jesus, I get to see personally. I get to see that woman that died for me, brother David.
go to your work and the forwarding of your kingdom as we look forward to that glorious day when we'll spend with you in eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
education trying to lift us. Today. Yeah.
just so blessed here at the church, the chapel with the singers. And again, like I said, there's many more that have ever sung this morning that still that God has blessed us so much with. I know some of you all were here Thursday night, and I shared this, and I want to share it again. We've all been praying for my brother. We all know that he's had two cancer operations on his throat. He went back last Monday to do a third one. He did have a big mass on his throat. And we prayed over and over. As a matter of fact, we took a call here from him that God had healed him. And I just want to share this so that I know a lot of you all that heard it Thursday night, just enjoy the game, okay? I'm just going to say it that way. My brother went to the doctor one day. He went back to the room. His doctor is a, a lady. She came, she came in. And her and Daryl just, just clicked. She said, I have never met a person in all my life that is so positive for what, he's, for what you're going through. He said, even though you know you have this cancer, you know you have this mass, but yet you're still just so positive. And Daryl's always told her, because he's a preacher, he said, you know, I give all my credit to God. God's always gave me the strength and he's kept me through all this. So Monday he went, and they done a scan on my brother. And I almost described it the same way my brother described it to me. They took the scan. She had the scan that they had took two weeks ago. And the scan that they took Monday. And she's sitting there and she's just looking at him. And she's just going back and forth. Daryl says she just went back and forth, looked at this and looked at that, and put them side by side and just compared everything, looked at it. And she looked at my brother, she goes, I want to do one more scan. So my brother said, okay. So she went back and they done another scan. She brought the scan out. She put it together and she's just looking at it. Back and forth. And she laid the table down. She told my brother, she goes, lay on the table. Lay back. So my brother got up on the table and laid back. And she got her light out and everything. And she's looking down his throat where they had done two operations on his vocal cords. She's looking and she's looking and she just leans down and gives my brother a big hug. And she looked at him and she goes, I don't know this God that you pray to. She says, because there is nothing in your throat. She goes, the second scan that we took shows nothing. She goes, we, this is two weeks ago with this mass, and she showed it to my brother again. And she goes, but this one here, there's no mass, there's nothing there. She goes, that's why I wanted to look down your throat. And she goes in to beat all, she goes, there's not even no scar tissue where we had operated the first two times. She goes, everything is completely gone. That's the God I saw. That's the one that I talk about. That's the one I preach about. My brother got beside himself and... And, and she just hugged him and she says, I just want to tell you one thing. She goes, I don't know this God that you're praying to, but I need to. She goes, but I'm going to tell you everything that's happened in your throat, we have nothing to do with it. Only that God that you serve has done it. Church, I serve a God that's in the devil business. When everybody else thinks it's impossible, give it to God. And he'll take care of it. But my brother's got both of those those scans. And I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about some water testimony. But more than anything, because you know technology today, they talk about, you know, and they, this has got, they've got all their teeth crossed and their eyes dotted. But when God comes on the scene, He makes it complete. He makes it complete. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see this. This morning, I'm going back to an old scripture. I was studying at the house last night. <clears throat> Been studying on a whole different thing. And I looked at Jill and I told her, I said, you know, 
God has told me to go to 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. So I opened my Bible to 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. And that's where I'm at this morning. And you all can say, well, you know, how do you know that? Well, I'll tell you what. Church, when I'm sitting there and I'm watching the Little League play bas uh, baseball on TV, and I love watching them little boys play. I just simply love it. I just, I do the, the talent that the little kids have and the sportsmanship that they have. And I was just sitting there and I, and I looked at Jill and I said, God was told me to turn to 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. This chapter here, church, is my job for you. It's my job as a pastor. The Bible says here in the fourth chapter, it says, I charge thee therefore, therefore, God, that the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season, and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come but they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn from the way of their own ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. But watch down to all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me that day. And not only me, but unto all them that love is appearing. Verse 17 says, Notwithstanding the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that my Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and preserve me to the heaven, the kingdom, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Father in heaven, I thank you again for this privilege to bow our heads before you. Lord, as you brought this message to me, Father Lord, I ask, like Lord, that I can do you worthy and try to deliver to them. Lord, I ask you, Father Lord, to anoint my lips. Speak through me, Father that they may see what you are trying to say. And Lord, we love you and we thank you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Preach the word. Be instant in season. Out of season. Reprove. Rebuke. Exhort. With all long suffering and doctrine. Church, you have heard me preach message and message and message about there's a heaven to gain. And there's an eldest son. You cannot serve God and serve man. You cannot be a godly person on Sunday and on Thursday and live for the world Monday through Friday. It can't happen. That's why I'm up here. This is what the Bible speaks here. It says here, preach the word, be instant in the season. There are times today, uh, Brother Dave, that I have, I have went to churches and just to visit. And they would look at me and say, Greg, you've got a message. Yes, I do. You've got to always be ready today, church. And I'm telling every one of you today, whenever you're out into this whole world and you're talking to the world and someone comes up and starts talking to you about God, church, you better be ready to speak about it. You better be able to tell the truth about it. Not just your words, but what the Bible says about it. Because today, children, it says here, and, and, and to be instant in the season and out season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort all long suffering and doctrine. Today, children, we do not condone sin. If you're sitting here this morning, children, and sin don't bother you, you need to get to an altar of prayer. You need to find out what's wrong today, children, because today, children, you are not going to make it to heaven. We
We sung that song a while ago. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. Today, children, in order to see Jesus, in order to make it to heaven, you have to rebuke this stuff. You have to get away from sin. You've got to change. The Bible says that when you come down to an altar of prayer and you give your heart and life to God, today, children, he makes a new creature out of you. Amen. So if he makes a new creature, you no longer go out and do the simple things that you used to do. You give it all to God today, children. Yes, we make mistakes. Let me tell you that today, church, I, I will tell you that over and over, and you have heard me preach it many, many times. We make mistakes. We fall short. Every one of us is also in this human body, in this carnal body, we're going to fail. But we serve a saving God. We serve a merciful Father. Today, children, last week I preached on second chances. I thank God today, children, that we serve a merciful God that was willing to give us a second chance. But it says here in his word, rebuke. So when you rebuke something, you're not going along with it. Church, too many times, I want to tell you, as Christians today, too many times we, we got a habit of turning our cheek and turning the other way and accepting things that shouldn't be accepted. And we see that to our man. That's why America's in the shape it is. Because today, children, we have fallen so far away from the grace of God. Because today, children, we continue to look the other way. Yes. And yes, this ain't popular preaching. But I want to today, I'll tell you today, children, this chapter is for grace. Today, children, it is my job as your pastor, as a preacher, to tell you there is sin in this world. And today, children, if you don't watch out as that great mighty lion that he is, he will devour that. But we can stand true. We can stand fast. We can rebuke this as it says here in his word. We can rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. Yes, it's not an easy road. It's not an easy road. I talked to Sister Judy the other day when we were having a singing at the church. And girls, I want to tell you, I apologize. Because we wanted to be there so bad I had to work late. I didn't get home when it was 1030. I was working all electrical. And so I never got to get back. So we missed that. But I want to tell you today, children, Sunday I got to the boat. I was over when we was talking with Sister Judy. And I said, you know, I just didn't realize what a long, what a long road it could be sometimes that you travel when, when you've got love that you're doing with. I see that, and you know I preach on mom a whole lot, you all know that, and you know what today, children, when she goes on to be with the Lord, I'm still going to preach about my mom. Mm -hmm. sure. Because you know why? She's the one talking about this God that I serve. She's the one that put me in the foundation where I need to be at. But I was telling Sister Judy about that, you know, sometimes we just, we question. So my mom's pastor church, I'm 64, mom's pastor of church, 64 years. I told you this story, my mom got called mom to start preaching. You know back when my mom was preaching, it wasn't popular. It wasn't the correct thing for a woman preacher. But you know, I read my Bible, and the Bible tells me that Jesus went too well. And he met a Samaritan woman there. Right? And, she, and he looked at her and he said, go tell. Go tell her what had been done. So in other words, he told her, he said, hey, you go preach. You go tell her about this saving God that we talk about. I ain't getting into that subject, but I just want to tell you that, children, that's how long my mom's been preaching. Been a man of soul saved. God's word is good. God is good. But I'm going to say this to here. You never know what you'll have to go through. Every one of us sitting here. You never know the battle that you've got ahead of you. It says here with long suffering, there are times in your life that you will go through battles that you feel like you never will get over or you never will accomplish. But I want to tell you this morning, children, if you have God on your side, you will get through it. 
God, all the suffering, God will give you glory. Victory comes in the morning. And today, children, every one of us sitting here, there's coming a day. That song could have been no more perfect for today's service. There is coming a day. No more long suffering. No more sin. No more little abused babies. Think about that. No more neglect. No more drug addicts. No more hell holes where that father just spent his last dollar on that last drink instead of paying his bills and taking care of his family. All that's going away, church. All that's going to pass away if you're saved. But if you're not saved, all that long suffering will continue. You will continue. If you're not a Christian this morning, children, I, and I'm not talking about nobody in this church. I'm just talking to Greg here. And so I, I, I put it all on the table. I don't want no one to come to me after the service and say, you pointed me out that you're speaking to me. I'm telling you today, children, if you don't know God, you don't know what you're missing. Amen. And I say that more and more one reason. There are times that you go through battles that you just can't get to. And you can't get through them by yourself. There's no possible way that you can carry that load. I know a man who can. And he says, cast them upon me. To give me those burdens. To give me those cares. And I will take care of them. This morning, children, as I read this scripture to you, I want you all to realize today, children, that if there's nothing else in life that you need to look at, you need to look that there's a heaven to gain. And there's a Savior that loves you. It says here in his scripture, it says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Church, do we see that today? Yes. There are so many different churches out there, so many denominations out there today, children. And there's churches out today that are saved believers. Satan worshipers. You walk inside that church and they have a big picture of Satan on the wall and this is what they worship. Where are we going? Where is the United States going? Today, church, I'm telling you, if you don't teach your children and you don't teach your family and your loved one about a God, they will find something else. And it might not be what you want them to find. That's why it's so important to teach this is so important to preach this. Preachers that are here today, and yes, I have quite a few preachers here. Preach God's Word. Teach God's Word. But more than anything, children, teach the Bible. Preach the Bible. Don't teach nothing else. We were talking, we were, uh, uh, matter of fact, in the scripture, I was reading back in here, we were talking about, you know, not, not to, the, well, it's in the commentary. And it says, you know, sometimes that people, want to bend out. They don't want to speak on just the truth. They want to make it, what do you want to say, candy coating? You know, kind of make it easy to the ear. I don't want to offend nobody. You know, I don't want nobody to leave out of here offended. I'm sorry, I left at the table a long time ago. If my preaching offends you, I do not apologize for that. Because if it offends you, you need to find out what's wrong with your heart. Because today, children, the only thing I have to tell you, there's a heaven to gain and there's a hell to shun. The Bible speaks of this and that's what the Bible says. And this is what I preach. When I was reading this scripture, I told Joe, I said, this is, this is all for the grave. Not for a single one of you sitting out here. This scripture here was for me. Because sometimes I feel like I fail. Sometimes as pastor, as a preacher, I feel I do not get the word out the way I need to get it out. I do not want a single person to be able to look at Greg and say, you didn't tell me about this. I want everyone to be able to say, when they stand before the judgment of our God, 
I wanted to know. But I tried my best. See, Jill and I talk about a lot of things. And death is one of them. Because it's come to all of us. We're never going to sit the way we are today again. Next Sunday, you all know what life's about. Next Sunday, maybe one of us is going home with the Lord. I don't know what this message is about, as far as for Greg. All I can tell you is I don't ever want to be prepared. I don't want no one to miss it. I don't want no one to come short. God has gave you an opportunity this morning. You're in God's house. You're standing here, sitting here underneath the Word. God is speaking to you. If you don't know Him as your personal Savior, it, Sister Michelle, flip the lights. That's how quickly we can be in eternity. You ever thought about that? That quick your life could be over. You can turn back on. As she hit those lights and I clicked it, there's no more time to say, Lord, I'm sorry. There's no more time to say, God, please forgive me. And we see this, church. Every one of us sitting here, we see this. We know it was it that went to work and never came back home from work. We talk about it all the time. Brother Greg and I, we see it at work quite a few times. Last time we seen that person was when they left Millicon to go home that night. And they never made it back the next day. We serve a merciful God, as I preached last week, second chances. But today, Charlie, I am sitting here in front of you and telling you today, Charlie, one more time. If you don't know him, you need to make it right with God because today is a day of salvation. There is no promise of tomorrow. Yes, this is a procured message. Yes, it seems pretty hard. But you know what? I am a coward. I am a coward to tell the truth, to preach the truth, to let everyone know about this God. That's why God put me up here today, children, for me to stand up here for you and yes, make mistakes and yes, fail, yes, pronounce words wrong. Yeah, I'm first admitted, I know I make mistakes. But there's one mistake I'm not making, and that's telling you there's a God that loves you and He's a forgiving God. And if you don't know Him this morning, you can know Him. You can know Him. The Bible says all we got to do is confess. And believe that God would save us. It says here, not, with, not without standing, the Lord stood with me, and he strengthened me, that by the preaching might be fully known that all the Gentiles might hear, and that I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. I remember the very first message I preached. I went down to the door, New York, Kentucky. And I'll probably share this story with you, but I feel bad to share it. Maybe you're sitting here this morning and maybe you haven't stepped out on, on the boat like Peter did. You haven't stepped out of faith yet. But my uncle Farman had heard that I got called to preach. And he called me up and said, hey, Greg, I'd like for you to come down and preach. We've got a revival going on. Would you be willing to come down? I was terrified. I mean, you know, I was planning on preaching at Mom's church. First one, you know, God called me to preach, you know. And Mom, I told Mom about that. And she goes, well, be, we'll, we'll be down there with you. My dad was on life. So I told him, you know, I'd, I'd be there. <laughs> and Greg, I was this little kid that knew not a lot about the Bible. I was raised in church. And I studied it every day. But when I walked in that door, 
The old devil just showed me all the great preachers that I knew that was there. So many of them have been preaching for many, many, many years. I thought, what, what am I going to say that's going to make a difference in their life? So I come down to the second pew and I sit there and Y'all ought to see me coming down the drive, coming down 275 on, on my motorcycle with my guitar strapped on the back. You know, I was psyched for sore eyes. But that's all right. I had a plan. I had a vision. You know what? And I, and I honestly, even though I, I was scared to death, I was looking forward because I had told God yes, and I was willing to do this. So I remember coming down and I sat on the second pew. I'll never forget that the second pew of the church. <laughs> And my uncle Frank, big old boy, he he probably about 350, close to 400 pounds, just a big old, just a jolly, just a jolly man, come down and put his big pair of arms around me and gave me a big old hug and said, "How you doing, teacher?" <laughs> Junior, I'm scared to death. He goes, "Yup, you will be." And he goes from this point on instantly. Bible says to be instant. He said, from this point on, he says, you're going to be called to go to many places that you're not going to expect. You're going to be stepping through doors that you didn't think you'd ever have to step through. But you said yes. I preached on the prodigal son that night. I'll never forget this. And Brother Jesse, an old time preacher, his boy was there. And his boy walked out to an order for the night. And bro uh, Brother Jesse came to me after church and he gave me a great big hug. And he says, You know, my son has been underneath my ministry, underneath my preaching over 30 years. He's never gave his heart back to God. He said, It took a young man. <coughs> close to his age to make him realize there's something else out there that he could change. Church, that's why it's so important. I, I know I pick out my young kids. There's a work out there for each and every one of you all. There's a job out there for each and every one of you all. Just be instant and be ready. Because the minute you say yes, that you're willing to do it, God's going to use you. God's going to use you for his kingdom, church. Look around. The Bible says that the harvest truly is great, the labors are few, and children, the harvest is getting right. We see it. The harvest is getting right. It's getting close to gathering time. It's getting close to gathering time where he's going to bring them all in. And he's going to start soaring. He's going to start soaring. He's going to get that old book of life. And he, Brother Dave, he's going to open that book up. And he's going to start looking. For when you was forced into blood. Church, do you remember that day? I pray you do. As the singers come, I know this is a curious service. You all can walk out there and I don't have a clue what he talked about. But one thing I want you to remember. If you remember anything when you walk out on doors, Remember, there's a, a saving God that loves you. And He can use you in His work. There's a great harvest out there in church. We stand this morning. If you don't know Him as your personal Savior, I'd love to pray with you. If you have a need that you just want to pray about, again, yeah, I've told you many times, this altar is just not for sinners. It's for anyone that has a need of God this morning as they say.
I just want to say again, I thank each and every one of you. You know, and I'm not spot them out. I'm not going to point nobody out because they did it for the love and they did it for, they wanted to do it. But did, did everyone notice the ditch up there this morning when you all pulled in how good it looked? That's a good work this year. Thank God for each and every one. Did you notice how good the church looked this morning when you walked in? How clean it looked? We got some good workers here. Again, I'm not pointing this or point out, I just want to thank all the workers that have helped out, all those that are willing. God knows who you are, and God will bless you over and over and over for helping in His kingdom. All hearts dismissed. All hearts dismissed, yeah. All hearts cleared. I'm close. Okay. I told you I made mistakes, and I told you that. Bow our heads, Brother Phil, will you just miss us? Thank you, God, for a beautiful day. Thank you for allowing us to come to another service. God, your spirit will help. Thank you for the good songs and uh, Lord, the message that you brought to the greatest one. Uh, we just thank you for everything, God. I pray that you go with each and every one of us as we go our separate ways to me. Keep your hand on us, keep us safe. Lord, help us to be that witness that we need to be, God, out there. Lord, we give you the 